For the first time since May of last year, we are seeing less people who are testing positive for COVID-19. The Department of Health says based on lab results on November 12, only less than 4% of more than 40,000 people tested positive for the coronavirus. These results are promising because the World Health Organization recommends that the positivity rate remain below 5% for at least two weeks before governments can consider reopening. But scientists are also reporting a new mutation of the very contagious Delta variant. It's called Delta Plus, which is now present in many countries. Most cases have been found in the United Kingdom. And again, it's raising a lot of questions, including how effective our vaccines are against it. What do we know about Delta Plus? And what does this mean for us here in the country? I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez, and you're watching Med Talk Health Talk on CNN Philippines. We're here to build a healthier future for you. We are seeing hopeful signs of more and more people testing negative for COVID-19. But we are again up against a new mutation of the Delta variant, which is claimed to be more transmissible. To help us with today's discussion, let's welcome Dr. John Wong. He's an epidemiologist and the senior technical advisor of Epimetrics. Also with us is Dr. Mark Edsel Ayas. He's the head of Clinical Genomics Laboratory at the Philippine Genome Center. Let's start with some good news. Dr. John, let's explain to our viewers uh, these hopeful numbers. Ano? So, gumaganda ang situation natin. Less people are testing positive for COVID-19. What could be uh, mainly attributed to this? Are, are, are Filipinos doing the right thing in combating the virus? Or is this a natural progression of uh, any pandemic? One is transmission rate is going down, mm -hmm. uh, meaning people are uh, masking better. No, mm -hmm. uh, second is contact rates are also down. No, uh, meaning people are also observing social distancing. Uh, and then third, that uh, testing capacity has caught up no, with the number of cases, so that we're able to catch those who are infectious and isolate and quarantine them immediately. You have to continue these helpful behaviors. No. Uh, masking, early testing when symptomatic, uh, but most important of all, no, uh, those who have not been vaccinated should try to get vaccinated. But as we know, mutations of viruses are very common. And we are now seeing the Delta Plus or AY.4.2, which looks very similar to the original Delta variant. Dr. Edsel, let's explain how these mutations happen and how are uh, the two different, this Delta Plus and the Delta variant? Well, mutations are actually spontaneous. They occur as a result of evolution. You can think of it as a ways of the virus to adapt. No, And as we are vaccinating as we are uh, increasing our exposure because it's already been nearly two years now since the mm -hmm. virus has been introduced into the human population. Naturally, viruses like this will mutate in order to adapt and maintain its hold on us, basically. Now, the Delta Plus is called such because it is derived from the original delta you can think of it as parang anak niya no so it has it is basically an evolution from that original delta mm -hmm. and the reason why it is of concern is that it has some mutations in its um, spike protein, which is the one that interacts and is also with our body cells, and it's also the target of our vaccines, has changed in such a way that it could potentially become more infectious and possibly also evade our immune systems. Dr. Edsel, when it comes to this even newer variant coming up, the Omicron variant, how does this compare w with Delta Plus? Mas grabe ba tong si Omicron? The Omicron variant that you're mentioning, or the, the, the B11529, no? This was uh, reported early on, so um, it is it, it raised concerns because it has uh, a lot of mutations that are quite concerning in the, what I mentioned, the spike protein. Mm -hmm. But I would also like to make it clear that there have only been several cases. And in um, South Africa, they noted a large number that, uh, I mean, in proportion to the sampling that they're doing. So there are only a very few number of cases, so they've only raised um, the raise the flag for now. It doesn't mean that it's already spreading at madaming madami. Is it too early to have face-to-face -face, uh, gatherings with loved ones and relatives, which I know a lot of uh, Filipinos are so eager to have already? 
one, you should be vaccinated. Mm -hmm. Second, no, meet in a well-ventilated area, no, open space if possible. Uh, and third, mask up. Under these conditions, no, it would be safe to meet, no, but otherwise, no, you, you, you'll be at risk of uh, getting infection no, if uh, any one of these conditions is absent. But with a little information or with the, with the current information that we know with these two variants, does it seem like uh, that the current vaccines may, may, may have a hard time in, try, in trying to hold these new variants back? And it's too early to say uh, because the number of cases have, aren't, aren't that sufficient enough to make a very strong recommendation. But um, in line with our understanding of the immunity that can be provided with the existing vaccines and the updates on the boosters, mm -hmm. we believe that at the very least, it will provide protection, at least in the form of reducing severe and also hospitalization, which is something that you also have to consider. Now, most Delta Plus infections have been seen in people who are unvaccinated. But studies also show that the variant has increased transmissibility even among the vaccinated people. Dr. Mark, uh, why does this happen? Um, do we know why breakthrough infections uh, occur more? It's that the, the, the mutations in the spike protein of the Delta Plus are such that it is exquisitely um, efficient. Now, when we say exquisitely efficient, it means that it doesn't need as many viral particles in order to cause an infection. What I'm trying to say is it's not a problem of the vaccine that they are getting infected despite the fact that they are vaccinated, but because of the fact that the virus is mutating to such a way that it is more efficient at causing infections. Dr. John, we've been emphasizing the importance for people to get vaccinated. And early on, the amount of vaccines was an issue. Is that still the problem now? Herd immunity may no longer be possible no, because uh, of the high transmissibility of uh, Delta. And also we have less than perfect uh, vaccine efficacy. No? So our target should be 100% vaccination. What are the factors that affect full vaccination? Uh, first, uh, availability of the supplies. No? So right now we probably have enough supply for about 55% no? or 60% of the population. No? So if more people want to be vaccinated, no, we, we, we will not have enough. No? Second, accessibility. No? Uh, can people get to the vaccination sites? No? Uh, our vaccination rate for the elderly is only at 60%. So are these 40% having mobility issues? No? So we need to address that. Now, scientists say that vaccines do a lot more than just trigger the production of neutralizing antibodies. Does this mean that booster shots add an extra layer of protection? More on this when we return. We're your connection to healthcare, and you're watching MedTalk Health Talk on CNN Philippines. The health department recently approved the provision of booster shots. But many ask who can avail of these and how quickly? And what are the basic guidelines for getting one? I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez and you're watching MedTalk Health Talk on CNN Philippines. We're together in health. Additional doses of the COVID-19 vaccine will soon be available to Filipinos before the end of 2021. A booster shot is an additional dose after the protection provided by the original one decreases over time. And usually a booster is given after the immunity from the initial dose starts to wane. Dr. John, who can get these booster shots? Who are eligible for these? And how long after should they be getting one after their last dose? First is health workers, no? uh, because they're essential to uh, protect uh, the rest of the population. No? Uh, we don't want them to uh, even get an infection. No? Uh, the second group are, are people whose immunity has waned no? uh, months after their primary series and who, who need additional protection no? because if they get hospitalized, no, it's usually more severe. No? So these are the elderly, uh, people with uh, comorbidities, no? uh, and also people who are immunocompromised. No? Could you explain to our viewers the importance of a booster shot and should, should they think of their original 
uh, vaccine being non-effective? Should they get another set of vaccine of a different brand maybe? So there's also this understanding that it looks like the primary series might have been more effective if there was an additional dose, but that information was not available at the time. So now that we've had about a year of experience, this is where we are coming in to adjust the dosing schedule. Mm -hmm. Now, for those who have already had the primary series, the booster shot is a single dose that comes thereafter, no? And based on the, re uh, on the studies that have been done on booster shots, um, at least for uh, the Philippines, no, the the recommendation states that the preferred dose is Pfizer, regardless of your um, your primary series, followed mm -hmm. thereafter by homologous. Ibig sabihin nun, kung ano man yung initial dose nin, uh, primary series ninyo, yan din yung uh, matatanggap nyo na, na booster shot. And this is uh, based mostly on the safety profiles, of course, no, to minimize the side effects. After getting the primary series, they're thinking of getting another brand, uh, another type, an mRNA type, but with, a, with, with the two shots. Are there any risks to these? What can you advise to those who are contemplating uh, this type uh, of procedure? Well, if you're looking at Pfizer or mRNA vaccines as a booster shot, you know, they can increase your uh, protection from primary infection by all, uh, already above 90%. So a single dose is already effective. So therefore, uh, at least for now, you know, because if, uh, the studies have yet to show if two dose or a full schedule as booster compared to single booster is more effective. We don't know that yet because the time frame, hindi pa, hindi pa nakaabot tayo ng time to make that conclusion. Now let's go over some of the details of recommendations made to the health department by the independent panel known as the Health Technology Assessment Council or HTAC. Now the recommendation of the Health uh, Technology Assessment Council uh, includes giving booster shots for healthcare workers and senior citizens six months after they complete their single or two dose COVID-19 vaccine, while immunocompromised patients are recommended to get additional shots at least 28 days after they complete their vaccination. There are four types of COVID-19 vaccines available here in the Philippines today, and you can see them on your screen. There's the whole virus vaccine, such as Sinovax and Sinopharm. Then there are the RNA or mRNA vaccines, which uh, examples are the Pfizer, BioNTech, and Moderna. Third is the non-replicating viral vector, such as the AstraZeneca and Sputnik, and the protein subunit, such as Novavax. Is choosing one or the other still important, or is it still whatever is available in front of you is okay to get? When you boost it, no? uh, it's best to choose the most effective vaccine. Second, uh, what is the supply availability no? in, in your region or in your LGU? And third, we've also seen that if we mix vaccine brands, no? sometimes that confers a greater immunity no? because it uh, generates a broader immune response. No? So those are, those are the reasons why Mixing and matching is also a good idea. Are there any risks to mixing and matching uh, different types of vaccines, different uh, uh, boosters for, for that matter? Uh, what can you advise those who are wary about their own physical health? It has been generally seen to be safe. No, without there, there isn't an increased risk of side effects in with either group, and it has conferred. Uh, it has been able to provide the immunity that is needed from those mixed shots. No? Mm -hmm. so, Dr. John, really quick, uh, now that the rollout for the pediatric age group, the 12 to 17 age group is, is underway, do we expect that the kids will need a booster shot then around six months down the road? We, we need to observe the, the effect of uh, the primary series on children. No? The, the clinical trials on children have just been concluded. No? Uh, there hasn't been sufficient follow-up period to see whether they will also experience the, the same amount of weaning. What role do the unvaccinated play in, uh, in the whole picture on how different variants come into play, Dr. John? They increase transmissibility. No? So uh, we still have a large pool of uh, uninfected individuals, no? Unva unvaccinated and un uninfected. No? So variants will increase the, the rate at which these people become infected. No? What vaccines do is, um, if you think of the pool of uh, sus uh, susceptibles as uh, a bathtub, no? what vaccination does, it, it drains the bathtub. So it make, it reduces the number of susceptibles. No? Uh, so it also increase, uh, decreases uh, your risk no, of getting these people infected. No? So 
that's the importance of uh, getting people, as many people as possible, uh, vaccinated you know, so that they can develop uh, immunity. Now, it's been almost two years since the pandemic has started. When we return, we'll talk about the new treatments for COVID-19. Your health is our mission. This is MedTalk Health Talk on CNN Philippines. There's currently no cure yet for COVID-19, but experts are studying the many different treatments that can be administered. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez, and you're watching MedTalk Health Talk on CNN Philippines, where your care comes first. Scientists all over the world are looking for the antiviral drugs meant to reduce the risk of COVID-19 hospitalization as well as death. What do we know so far about this drug? Should, should uh, the hopes and dreams of the Filipinos of a cure be assured with this new medication. Molnupiravir is intended to be administered early on mm -hmm. in the in the viral if you look at it in terms of a timeline no? in the early stages of the timeline upon infection it's not intended to treat severe illness no and also it is not intended to be a prophylactic Mm -hmm. No, so that means at early onset of symptoms, and if there's a high index of suspicion, even without a positive RT-PCR, you may choose to start it in order to shorten the the duration of the illness and also uh, hopefully decrease uh, the the probability of a patient uh, requiring. Um, uh, hospitalization in order to address the symptoms. First batches have already arrived here in the Philippines. What does it look like in terms of distribution? Where will this drug be concentrated more? Who will be able to get this more? The people who are eligible for this drug no, are the elderly and people with comorbidities. No? Mm -hmm. So it should be sent or it should be uh, distributed to areas where a lot of this a2 and A3 uh, populations no, have not yet been vaccinated no, because they are still at a uh, very high risk of hospitalization and disease. Dr. John, what can you advise those who are thinking, I don't need to take the vaccine anymore because there is a drug, Molnupiravir is here. What can you advise to those who, who might be uh, thinking that route? There is a population uh, have no other recourse no, uh, except to, to, get, to get vaccinated. No? Uh, but even for uh, people for which molnupiravir is uh, is uh, indicated, no? uh, it's still best to get vaccinated no? because the the effect is more is more sustainable. No? Molnupiravir is effective only if you're given if you're given it within the first five days of onset of symptoms. No? If you miss that window, uh, it's no longer effective. What does our future look like? What does the future of Philippine? What do the future of Filipinos look like when it comes to this pandemic? Are we seeing light at the end of the tunnel? I think people just have to realize now we're still in the midst of a pandemic, even if it doesn't feel like it. No, um, uh, an analogy I used for for my pamangkin is that para siyang, you know, when the when the cat is gone, the mouse comes out to play. It doesn't mean the cat's gone. No, so. Until the world has recovered, you know, people still have to be vigilant. People have to remember that it is still possible, habang marami pang taong hindi pa bakunado, that uh, outbreak and you know infections can still occur, and it's something that we're going to have to work together to. Uh, to live with for at least a foreseeable future. We definitely learned a lot from our experts today. Thank you, epidemiologist Dr. John Wong and clinical genomics lab head Dr. Mark Edsel Ayes. We want to be your partner for a lifetime of good health. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez, and this is MedTalk Health Talk on CNN Philippines. <music>